Well, hello and welcome. Today I'll be talking about Uncharted Epic, which is, um, well, the topic in today's discussion is going to be the Matter of Window Matchers, which I talk uh, quite a bit about, or have so far. Uh, today we are doing a more general talk, which is why I'm not showing anything, because we are going to be doing uh, a comparison between tiling and floating window matchers and uh, what I think of each, uh, you know, which one do I think is better, uh, stuff like that. So let's just begin. And let's first begin by what is a floating and a tiling window manager. What is, uh, what are these two? So uh, let's begin with tiling, I guess, because this is what people often associate with window matchers, stars and alone. Okay, that she had to be her bottom. Here we go. So, you know, we have things like I tray, we have things like awesome, Q tile, X monad, uh, Rack Poison, it's an old one. And then we have a bunch of others. I personally like Qtile, I don't like Absom or I3 either, I have not tried Xmonad and Direct Poison I couldn't be offered with it, but I did try it and I didn't have any major problems with it as such. I just didn't feel like configuring it. Uh, now the other type is floating. So what is floating? Or what, not what is floating, but what are the examples of it? So I know we have things like Ice Window Manager, then we have things like Open Box. XFWM, which is actually a window matcher. Out of desktop environments come floating window matchers, so that's why this is a thing. Then we have things like uh, Fluxbox and then we have things like uh, Blackbox as well, which is an old one. It's what Fluxbox and Offbox are uh, based on. Then there's a bunch of others, uh, but that's really the business point. The point here is there's different window matchers. And if you go in back your tiling one, so let's go in the tiling. There are multiple types of matchers. These there's, well, there, there's, uh, let's see, let's do this again. So we have a tiling, then we have the dynamic and manual types so what's the difference between these two so let's say we have a screen and let's say we open up um, let's say we have like two windows open we'll call this w1 w2 so you have these two windows, so you go and close one of them, the dynamic one would put the entire thing as W1, so it would automatically fill the rest up. But if you take manual, and you know we do the same thing, we have W1 and W2, and you close it, then you end up with W1. And there's this up here, so this is the... So that's the way this works, and with floating, it's just floating. Of course, different window matchers are going to be different, but it doesn't have types like tiling ones do. But tiling ones, we generally tend to split between manual and dynamic. Dynamic automatic resize windows, and manual ones give you more control, but they also don't automatically resize them, so you have to do that yourself. However you may want to. So it's up to you how you do things, you know, which you prefer is up to you, you know, there's dynamic ones or things like Qtile, etc. Manual ones, I believe something like Heart Poison is manual. I'm not sure I3 might be as well, though I'm not sure about that. Uh, not, I'm not quite sure about that because I don't use that. So anyway, uh, use whichever one you, when you want. Uh, I'll link the Arch, Arch Wiki page on like window matcher as well. It's a huge list of different tiny window matchers and floating ones. And, you know, you'll be able to see, you know, what kind of window matchers exist. There's a lot in the Archwiki, so 
I'll be linking that and you can see what there are. Now, what are floating ones? So if you have floating. Well, let's say we have our screen again. There's only one type here. So you know you have window. Your window might be, you know, like this. It might be like this. You know, you might have windows behind each other. Uh, so on. So floating window managers doesn't automatically fill the screen with them. It doesn't tile them. It simply puts the windows as floating, you know, as it says. So it just puts the windows there in whatever size they want to be. Or what the window manager wants them to be, depending on if you said something. So what's the benefit of either? You know, people often say that tiling window managers are, you know, Let's say, okay, let's begin by writing tiling, so remember what we are talking about, and then let's draw a line. So there's some, so now we have our plus, and we have our minus. And our minus is, or let's forget the plus. So with, uh, I have heard of, people say that tiling window matchers are going to, you know, be more, more effective, more... No, they're going to allow you to do your workflow better, they're more customizable, they are uh, just, you know, they're more advanced, they're better, but that's not necessarily the case. For instance, they are not anymore, uh, they are often not anymore, uh, they are often not anymore customizable, they are often not anymore difficult, they are not many times not anymore advanced, because with floating measures too, you have to customize things. Of course, you can customize layouts, but many floating measures also have like key-based layouts that you can do if you want to ice window matcher for example and you might want to configure that now there's some easy window matchers in both kinds and some difficult ones so it's not difficult is going to be determined by the type of window matcher it's actually going to be determined by the specific window matcher and what that offers for your configuration and such of course more difficulty often means more configuration ability so up to you what you do i guess now, another thing to take into account is the aforementioned efficiency. And it's not necessarily the case. It depends on you as the user because sometimes windows can get screwed up if you're a tiling window manager. And in that case, it's not going to be efficient. Also, you might not like tiling layouts, in which case it isn't efficient. Also, you can't really put things on top of each other unless you have special controls for making them floating and uh, with some window manager do support. And... Even that is a bit chunky. So if you know you like multitasking, you like having things next to each other, you want to automatically have things take your screen without having to resize, then tilings are getting more efficient for you. They do that perfectly. They do it very well. But if you're somebody who wants small windows, you want windows on top of each other, you want, you know, out of single workspace instead of using multiple workspaces, then you probably are not going to like tiling a lot. And that moves on to negatives. So indeed, it doesn't run very well with things on top of each other. It doesn't run well in a single workspace. If you want to use tiling window matter, you have, you, you're going to benefit a lot from using multi workspaces. And uh, that's a different workflow, you know. You might be used to only using one, but with tiling one, you are going to be using multiple because eventually the windows are going to get really small if you're only working on one and it's going to become a huge pain. So that's the same thing. And the overall workflow as well is very different. It's going to be... It's going to be very different from floating one, and usually things are floating, so it's going to get some getting used to if you are not experienced with it already. And uh, the main thing here really is, in my opinion, that it doesn't work well on single workspace. That's the main disadvantage. If you want to work everything in one spot, everything in one workspace, this is not going to be a good choice because it's going to be very inconvenient. Uh, but generally, I think it's going to be fine if you can go past that if you like having things full screen if you want to have things uh size like full screen or full slot when you open them then tiling one is great and if you want to multitask with like two things next to each other tiling matchers are really good now then there's floating so here are positives and negatives again so what are the positives so once again you can you know run your windows on a single workspace better because they are not set to be in certain positions. They are not taking up like off screen. They are not resizing. You can simply have things on top of each other, which means you're going to have much more efficient single workspace workflow. However, 
you're not going to have automatically things splitting, you're not going to have like automatic things going full screen, taking up full space. So what you're going to end up with is going to be a less great full screen experience because you have to make them full screen manually. However, what it also means is you can resize things how you want, much easier, because if you use tiling match and you want to resize, you often have to click the insert key and the other window will you, will often, if it's automatic one, or dynamic one anyway, sorry, dynamic, uh, then it will resize the other one. And if it's not, then it won't, but uh, regardless, it's good to recur initial shortcuts on, uh, on tiling ones usually, but if you want to reach the floating, you can just uh, press the border or whatever, and you can resize like that most of the time. So, in that sense, floating ones are very convenient, and they allow you to kind of place things wherever. It also means windows don't get screwed up, you know, if your window, if your uh, app is meant to function in certain resolution, it will be able to open the resolution, it won't get in a half-screen configuration thing, uh, like it might not tiling one, it won't get, it won't have issues with resolution like it might tiling ones, so you are going to have much better compatibility in that sense. For example, some game launchers copy the screen as a solver in a tiling window matcher, but in floating ones they don't, because they actually work properly. So, really up to you what you prefer. Now some negatives are that it doesn't open up uh, split screen automatically, so if you want to go like uh, split screen you have, to, you have to do it manually, you have to go and uh, you might have like options to set the layout, but you see how for ski for it, and if you don't, then you are just have to move them like manually by hand, which is going to be a bigger pain. And uh, it's overall not going to work so well if you want to move a task, if you want to tile things, if you want things to be full screen, it's not going to be as good. So it really comes down to your preference. Now, what is my preference? It depends on what I'm doing, because out of time I do like tiling ones, even for example programming. Having a tiling one is very, very nice. I can use a website to look up things on one, has one side and have my code on the other. It's extremely convenient and it's just overall very, very good and very functional. Now, on the other hand, if I'm playing a game with a launcher in it, floating ones are nicer because the tiling ones don't handle those launchers as well. So, yeah, comes down to what you like, comes down to what you prefer, Do you, what kind of workflow do you use. This is my preference, this is what I like to do, and that's why I'm doing it this way. So, do you have your own opinions? If you do, uh, feel free to comment uh, about it and you know what you think. If you have anything else to add, feel free to comment on that as well. Uh, anything really, go ahead. Uh, with that, uh, that's that, so bye I guess.